before we dive into making this bend, it's important that we understand angles and different types of angles we're going to use when we're pipe bending. Now the most common angles which I've already talked about are um, 60 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 120 degrees. They're the kind of the average angles as a plumber gas engineer we use when we're bending copper tube. So the other main thing we need to understand when we are bending these angles are whether we're bending it too steep or too shallow or whether we can fit it into the pipe bender. So before we crack on at bending angled pipe, we're going to look at how we're going to get angles, how we're going to um, produce something like this, which we can keep with us and what our limitations are with a pipe bender. Let's have a look at that now. Now, first thing we're going to do is let's have a look at the limitations of the pipe bender itself. So I've just pulled a 90 degree bend and I want to do a double offset. So if I get my loose pipe, now you see the hook, let's have a look at this first. So you see the hook where the hook is in its position. That's the closest really you should be able to put it to this bend. Okay, because if you move it further over and you try to bend it, that end there will actually end up digging in the bend. So this really is the minimum off double offset I can make. Okay, um, the reason why I'm going through this is, this is why we have to use offset bends rather than um, double 90s. So if I get do the loose pipe method, and again I put that in the center, and I can use my square and now mark the center there okay so that is the minimum center center mark this pipe bender will produce so let's have a look at measuring that and see what it actually comes out of. now i've got my set square laid out and this is our center to center measurement so the uh, minimum center center measurement i can make with this setup is 135 mil okay so that's the center there so around right about 135 mil is the minimum double offset i can make and this is why we have to do offset bends to get us closer than that distance. So let's have a look first at actually producing this little table I've made, so you, which will help us to do the angles for these bends before we crack on and start actually producing these offsets. So let's have a look at making these angles. So the first thing I need to do is just draw a straight line. And it doesn't really matter how long this straight line is. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put two marks on it. So I'm gonna put one there and one there. That I'm gonna call A and that I'm gonna call B. Now the next thing I need to do is use my compass to do about a third of the way down the line and I'm just going to place the compass on the A point and do a semicircle back. Okay, now I'm going to place the compass this time on the end of the semicircle. So the semicircle I've just done is 180 degrees. And the first angle we're gonna do is 60 degrees. So now, if I dissect through those two marks with my straight line, that angle there now is 60 degrees. Now, if I wanted to do a 30 degree, I keep my compass at the same distance. So I'll just check I haven't moved it. Okay, it's important that it's at the same distance. And I now go onto this bark again and do a mark up here. 
and then I go on to the 60 degree mark and do another mark. Now my distance through those two marks has now dissected the 60 degree. So that's now given me two 30 degrees. Now if I wanted to do a 120 degree, again making sure my compass is at the same distance, I go onto the 60 degree mark, put a mark, now dissect that line. That angle there now is 120 degrees. And if I wanted a 90 degree, I need to dissect those two between the 60 and the 120, because halfway between is 90. So just check and make sure. So I'll put a mark that hasn't moved. Mark on that one. Go to this one. Dissect my line. And I go through that line. And that now gives me 90 degrees. Now the last angle I'm going to do is a 45 degree angle. So, so this is 90, so half of 90 is 45. So this time I need to go longer than where I was doing before. And I need to go onto here and do a mark. And again, make sure I don't move the compass and make my other mark. And now I can dissect the two lines again. And that final angle is our 45 degrees. And that's how easy it is to find out different angles to help you when we're doing our pipe bending. Let's have a look at this 30 degree angle and see how we can use this angle to actually help us in the bending. So I've now just got the angles. So if I wanted to transfer them onto anything, I can basically get a piece of solder and I can bend it to my desired angle. I know now that roughly that piece of solder is a 30 degree angle so that can help me do my bending. So if I wanted to transfer this angle onto my bender, so this is the 30 degree we've just made, I can place this on round about where the bending mark is and I would bend my pipe so it's round about there should give me my 30 degrees. So let's have a look. Let's bend it to the mark. So the mark is in the center of the pipe. So I don't know whether you got that, but just let the spring go off. And now we can check. The angle is 30 degrees. And there you go, we've just bent a perfect 30 degree angle using the solder. Now, I've pulled a series of bends so we can have a look at them. So the first one, we've got a 30 degree. This is a 45 degree, this is a 60 degree and this is the 90 degree bend. So let me try and explain why we need these different angles. So, if we were to go around this 28 mil pipe, if we look at the 90 degree bend and we want to go around it, we're gonna struggle. 
because if we want to pull another 90 degree bend here it's going to be massively over the top. Now if that was a hot water pipe and that was a cold water pipe we would need about a 20, well we would need a minimum of 25 mil gap between the two pipes. Okay. Now we need to worry. We don't. We need to just worry about our starting point because the clips would always give us the same distance. So that one would be out of the reckoning. Now, if I wanted to go over using this 60 degree, and I want to go around it here again because of the limitations where the bender is, we would be looking. It's going to be up here again. So we've got another massive big difference. If we go over the 45, we're getting closer to the pipe, okay, and we should just about be able to get over that 28 mil with that. But if we look at the 30 degree, okay, you could see we get tighter than we would do with the 45, okay, because the 45 would be around there and that would be closer there. So our 25 mil gap. So for getting around this pipe, we would be better if we used a 30 degree angle. Now, what, what we kind of say is, if the distance is less than um, 50 mil, a two inch, then you could actually need to use less than the 30 degree angle, okay? But the less of the angle we've got, the closer we could get to it. So it, it's still we, we've still got to make a judgment on which angle we do use, but we've always got to remember if this is a hot pipe and a cold pipe, we need to keep them 25 mil away from each other so we don't get heat transferred. And we've also got to think about what does it look like? Does it look neat? 